Not a great day for Kentucky. And John Calipari, the coach of Kentucky, spoke after the loss last night and not only talked about what went wrong in the game, but what his approach might be when it comes to recruiting and getting players to Lexington moving forward. We made some critical mistakes at critical times again today. I mean, we had our chances. As good as they played and as many shots as they made, we still had our chances, and both on defense and offense. And when you have a really young team and you look at where did the mistakes come from, they were freshmen. I've done this with young teams my whole career, and it's going to be hard for me to change that because we've helped so many young people and their families that I don't see myself just saying, okay, we're not going to recruit freshmen. And I mean, the, the thing that we've been blessed with is families bring their sons to us and we do what we're supposed to do to help them prepare for the rest of their lives. But I've taken some older guys and we've done it. I'll look at other ways that we can do stuff, but this thing here, it's a different animal. Um, we've been able to help so many kids and win so many games and Final Fours, national titles and all this stuff, win league championships with young guys. It's changed on us. It's, all of a sudden, it's gotten really old. So we're playing teams that our average age is 19. Their average age is 24 and 25. So do I change because of that? Maybe add a couple older guys to supplement So there we go back to the age gap between uh, younger players at Kentucky and some of these older players that are sticking around because of NIL. It is, it is kind of interesting how it's done that 180 from the standpoint of, you know, you'd you'd want to get to the pros as soon as you could to try and make money because you couldn't in college. And now it's like, eh, screw it. I got a little bit of cash and I can be in my early twenties and still stay on campus. Why not? I'll stick around for a little bit. So it, it, like that, that part of the, uh, the adjusting to that is going to be fascinating to see how it goes. That's a, it's a tough position to be in if you're John Calipari, because you are getting the best of the best. You are getting the most elite players. And what exactly are you supposed to do under the circumstances that he's operating under? Do you recruit a lesser of a player knowing that they may stay longer? Do I mean, you're not going to offer enough money. Like NIL money is not going to keep the type of player he's getting to come to his school to stay. They're can, not going to stay. Can I ask you a question? I'm sorry to interrupt, but just asking you, because I know that you've coached, would you rather have talent or maturity? See, that's hard because you could be a mature bum. <laughs> that is true. I don't see a lot of bums in their, you know, in their teams. I'm, 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 I'm going to say point. I'd rather have talent, to be honest. I'd rather have talent because you can't, you can't teach talent. You can teach and develop skill, but talent is something that you're born with. Like, I, that's what I believe. And, and so to me, I can – I can figure out ways to adjust and to adapt if I have talent. If I have maturity, but that maturity is void of talent, then, I mean, that (laughs) – and and be clear, we're talking as if, you know, Oakland didn't have any talent. I'm not going to say that they didn't have any talent. They had enough talent to be in the, the tournament, you know, like 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 we heard on the update, right? I, Penn State isn't in the tournament, oh. you know. So it's it's fine. Finley wanted to shoot shots. It's fine, but he's right. We did not have enough talent to be in the tournament. So there is a level of talent with that that the the ages that Calipari's throwing out there at twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. If you're playing against. 23, 24-year-olds in a tournament like the NCAA, the tournament, you're probably going to lean towards the maturity of the talent on those teams. That's where the difference may come into play, Jonas, is that you do have guys that have talent. They're not the talents that, that they have on Kentucky, but nonetheless, they're talented enough 
with maturity, with maturity, with familiarity, to being a college student, to being a college athlete, to playing in the system perceivably, there are there are a lot of benefits and bonuses to imagine this building a team. <laughs> building a team like okay first year they came in i mean think about the fab five or you know some of these great teams that we've seen the 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 duke teams throughout the years the unc teams throughout the years you got at least two years to see these guys play yeah you got at least two years that, calipari is only getting one and that's also why college basketball was more popular back then because, because you, you got were, a chance to get to know yeah them. you were familiar with those guys you got to see them grow up I, I still remember like when the first duke players started leaving coach k to go early because all those guys st- stayed for four years it seemed like like and then all of a sudden i think it might have been elton brand or Corey mcgetty who left early and it was like whoa this is different like it just feels like this is now the next change in all this and you've got coaches that are trying to adjust to it similar to like we we've talked about in college football to where guys like Nick Saban are like yeah I'm good or Chip Kelly's like you know what man f this I just want to coach I don't want to deal with all the drama that comes with it I I just I wonder what that what that's like in college basketball for some of these guys uh, I think it's a very small percentage of coaches I mean, how many coaches would you put in in the, the the arena of Calipari in terms of getting talent as as a top coach? Like, what is it? Maybe less than two handfuls. Oh, I mean, yeah, he's one of the you know the the great recruiters. That's why he had all those like superstar teams uh, with, with Kentucky. But those also were younger players, and and you know he. He's got his one national title there, but other than that, it's you know it's it's been a long time since they've since they've gotten over the hump. I just think the one and done model. If he lives and dies by the one and done model, then he's got to get his team prepared for the tournament. They got it. You got to make the tournament, but you got to be preparing to win the tournament. How do we win the tournament? That's what you got, and, and maybe that is what he does. I don't know. I know he says he he's into the development of the kids. Like, let's just be clear here. You have a matter of the football season, six months. So, what, nine, ten months with these kids? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, let, like, let's be clear here. Don't sell me a bill of goods that you're going to make my child a better child. Like, you got nine to ten months before he goes pro. When? Just when? Like, you don't have to worry about the personal aspect of it. You don't have to worry about all of these developmental, because in nine to ten months, all it is is an experience. You're not going to, you're not, like, you may have an experience where you impact their lives for, for a lifetime. That's great. But if your business model isn't yielding results, then now you got to take into consideration what does that mean for the employer's investment in you? If your investment is so big and so great and, oh, I want to make sure that these kids and these young men are prepared for life and da, 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 this and that, and you get them for nine to 10 months and it's making your results suffer. You got in the first round of the NCAA tournament to a team that is named Oakland that isn't even in the state of California. That's what's happening to you. Then your employer now starts to look at it as, is this investment into these kids bigger, right? Is it bigger for for them to be better people that are prepared after nine to 10 months versus you putting together teams that are going to win? So there, there ultimately becomes a dilemma and, and almost seemingly a conflict of interest if you're saying I'm recruiting the best players in the country and I'm getting them to come here knowing that they're only going to stay one year. So I want to make sure that they're the best person that they can possibly be when they leave here. And there's, I, can't, I don't know if I buy that. And, and there's also the simple mathematics of the game last night. And I made this point earlier, but it's like, dude, you had a guy off the bench hit 10 threes. Like I don't know, like, I don't know when the hell that's ever happened in college basketball in the tournament. If he only hits eight, 
Like if he has a if he has a more down night and only hits eight threes off the bench, Kentucky wins that game. Like it just, like it it's a it's a the, the tournament's a pain in the ass. It's why it's so difficult to predict. It's why it's why they pay out what they pay out if you get a quote unquote perfect bracket because nobody ever has a perfect bracket, and. Coach Cal finds himself, you know, the the subject of all the ridicule and everything, and and whether or not that means he's going to actually change or adapt and whatnot. I think his buyout. People were already talking about getting rid of him. I think his buyout is like thirty four million or just under thirty four million. So he's going to be fine either way. It's just, you know, they got a Kentucky fans just got to deal with uh, with another tough loss and is what it is.